Let's uh, start at the beginning. Um, so like, there, back like right before GP or, 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 or RC Atlanta, there was a lot of hype around the combo of Gwina, a card from, I think Brothers War, Eyes of Gaia, and uh, Akarak, the Archlich, where you, this gives you two mana towards your Akarak, and then you cast this and you untap your Gwyn, and you get to cast this over and over and over again. But you need a cost reducer. And so uh, you need a cost reducer to make this at least one less so you can actually do it infinitely, otherwise it's minus one mana each time. And so um, I had been messing around with this. There were some Pioneer versions. Apparently there are like Historic and Explorer versions as well. Um, but when I was playtesting that deck, and that deck was pretty bad, but when I was playtesting that deck, one thing I really liked was even when you didn't have Gwyn, when you just had Heartless Summoning plus Acerac, this is just like, this This combo is just every every black man that you have lets you venture into the dungeon one time. Lets you venture into the dungeon one time. And potentially, like, that will let you dig deeper for your... Um, for your other combo piece too. And so I was doing a lot of looking for anything that went infinite with these two cards and I found Relic of Legends. Other people have found this too. <laughs> Apparently Saffron Olive put out a video in, I think it was Explorer, uh, for the same uh, same interaction. But uh, Relic of Legends is a three mana, uh, it, looks, it looks like Coalition Relic. I think that's what it's supposed to be like a reference to. But it's a three mana mana rock that you can also tap and you can tap a legendary creature you control and add a mana of any color. And this doesn't require the relic to tap. You can just do that any number of times. So Heartless Summoning, Acerac, Relic of Legends is a three mana infinite combo that does win the game since one of the dungeon rooms drains your opponent for one. It is a billion billion clicks, but this is a three card infinite combo that is capable of winning on turn three. If you go turn two Heartless Summoning, turn three Relic of Legends, taps Relic for a black, Acerac win the game. Um, three card combos in modern are definitely playable, especially when they win the game on turn three. Good examples would be Grinding Station, Underworld Breach, Mox Amber, plus like a legendary creature, although you can dig, like, dig for one of those pieces with the, the Grinding Station a lot of time, uh, Devoted Druid, Vizier of Remedies, Walking Ballista. Um, you, you can play three card combos in the format. And what I like about this combo is... That Heartless Summoning is a powerful engine card by itself. Heartless Summon plus Acerac is just, like, actually pretty good value. And then uh, Relic of Legends at least has, you know, some text on it. <laughs> I, Relic of Legends is by far the weakest of the three combo pieces. But um, it's relatively resilient, relatively fast. And you um, have access to Profane Tutor to find missing combo pieces. And I'm also choosing to play to splash blue for Muldrifter as a card that is very, very good with Heartless Summoning. Being able to evoke this for just one mana lets you dig through the deep very quickly, especially when you're pairing Muldrifter with Malak Rebirth, Undying Malice to evoke for one mana and die for one mana, just really turn through your deck. You can Witch's Cottage back Muldrifter for more cards. Uh, you also have access to Grief plus these Undying effects for premium interaction and interaction uh, that can strip interaction out of your opponent's hand is also really nice. Um, the, the Witch's Cottage is specifically really nice too. It can also recur your Acer Axe if they have a removal spell for it. Um, I think those are the main points. I can show the sideboard real quick. Obviously, like most sideboards of New Brews, kind of like, kind of basic, but... Um, I guess let's get going. I'm a little bit worried about my actions per minute. I'm a bit worried. Maybe should I have the right uh, list here because I think I made some changes. A bit worried about my actions per minute. A bit worried about the ability to click through everything. I, I had an opponent last night who was making me click through the combo, and I would have been able to kill them, but I'm like, I just need to not like have an injured finger for tomorrow, so I end up just going to bed. But yeah, I was I was play, I, I played this in a lot of different versions last night. So for a while, I thought that Golos was like the key to tying the room together. I had like a mono black version with like Golos instead of Moldrifter, where Golos is like three mana with Heartless Summoning, and it lets you find uh, Cabal Coffers, Urborg set that up, and then you, if you activate Golos, you're like trying to, you can Golos into the combo. I, that version may still be good. I didn't test it as much, but the problem with this deck is like black creatures, just like there aren't very many good black creatures that work with Heartless Summoning. It's like Acerac and Grief, and that's it, and, and kind of Shriek Ball. Two more losses will do it. I don't know. I'm having a good time. The deck's also like feeling like powerful, and we're losing like to a lot of uh, modern opponents drawing incredibly well against us. That's just kind of like, okay. <laughs>
when you're playing combo decks and your modern opponents are just drawing super wall against you that's just kind of like just kind of fine oh we have the turn three combo with turn one thoughtsies here we're up against tron though tron with a pretty bad hand guess i just have to take the karn Is an acer combo insane amount of clicking? Yeah, that's that's just how much I love you guys. I'm willing to click for y'all. No backup decks. Never backup decks ever again. Yeah, the the Lucy emotes are relatively new. Yeah, I probably will be on four levelers after my. Super impactful tweet last night. Okay, turn three win, turn one thought seize. Feels good. Second time with the turn three win today. Tron has got to be like an awful matchup though. Put it with the nice. I'm going to give him a smiley face with the uh, hope that they'll concede because I'm also nice. Please, it's Christmas. Please, opponent, it's Christmas. Concede. <laughs> but it says happy to concede unless you want to test your CCP. Um, please, no. <laughs> it's Christmas. Okay. Doesn't feel too bad. Let's get these needles in here. The M warrior to go in here. Gonna cut the pushes. Gonna cut the shriek ball. Fluster storm has a few targets. I think it's better than anything else. <laughs> Nobody's made me click through it today, which has been nice. How many clicks to join your pub by twenty? It's like actually like three hundred clicks. It's insane. Maybe more of a paper deck, huh? But I can I can get through one league today or one the yeah, stream of it the deck today. Alright, Mulligan. Let me put back Thoughtseize, I think. Cause if I draw a different black card, I want to keep the profane tutor if possible, but I can also just pitch the profane tutor. But I don't think I would need the third Thoughtseize effect. Maybe Grief just gets some too. Oh, they have Mine Tower Mine. What do you do if opponents on a Heliod combo and you play this deck a draw? Um, no, the Heliod player actually wins because you you actually deck yourself with this combo before you can deal infinite damage. This combo actually deals like 50 damage or something, because because you have to draw a card every single time. So, so, in, so this deck can't beat Infinite Life, I think, which is fine. Oh, stone, huh? They also have this Besaju, but they don't necessarily have another green source. A land would be really nice to just be able to combo kill next turn. Can't we make Infinite Goblins? The problem is uh, Infinite Goblins died a Heartless Summoning. Huh. Okay, I guess we're gonna profane tutor for a land. It's kind of a funny draw. That works. Yeah, one Thoracle on the side when Heliod never comes back. But who would be playing Heliod right now? Who indeed? All right, I think that's gonna be a, a win for us. Missed a point by summoning pre combo. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> they will be okay. I was just so excited to draw it. Sorry, I need to. Sorry, my phone keeps busy, busy, busy all day. Alright, uh, I'm gonna grab a good old basic swamp off Profane Tutor. A hero's line. This is why I like the deck. Just definitely, it's fast, a lot of value. Let's 
So yeah, I think my opponent is confirming that they're trying out the cityscape levelers. <laughs> yeah, yesterday I was tweeting about how I think that Tron should be playing, uh, should be playing cityscape leveler with all the Merc Tide that's running around. How do you win? So you go through the Lost Mine of Fandalver uh, like 20 times and you drain your opponent for 20. <laughs> takes a while, takes a while. Although you can do the last four damage by going through Tomb of Annihilation a bit quicker. Oh no, you can't because then they can just choose to discard a card or... Mm. I'm honestly feeling really good. I'm feeling good, I'm having a great time. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about, Chant? Get your pathetic ledger shredders out of here. Any day I'm playing Mole Drifter, I'm just yeah, I'm just vibing. Wait, I can get this cottage into play untapped. Live on styles with Twitch Prime, appreciate you. Whereas subtlety, I, I I would play subtlety if I had more blue cards, but we're a little ways away from it. Yes, this is the first league of the day. First league of the day, everybody. Chat will confirm. What's the most common card people ask me to sign IRL? Uh probably Jade Avenger. It, it really often changes to like whatever I've been playing lately. Like like just like at Atlanta I signed a lot of um like witches cottages and stuff. Hardcast grief next turn to get the breach. I don't think I want to play around them being able to combo this turn. We could die this turn though. Love to see just a construct being made. That means we're not gonna die. Streak ball can't kill these constructs, unfortunately. Bada, 33 months, okay, thank you. How did the Jade Avenger means start? Um, so like I so like after like two or three weeks of uh, like obviously like diving really deep into Modern Horizons um, post set release. I drafted it for the first time, just like in between rounds of a challenge, and I read Jade Avenger for the first time, and Jade Avenger, if you don't know, is like the sickest card ever. It's a, a frog samurai. Ooh, push is pretty good draw. I really want to hard cast the grief and take the breach though. So let me let me go ahead and put a mole drifter on top. Hard cast grief. Take breach and then think about attacking. I think I'm gonna leave these back. Yeah, and so like, I'm like that card's awesome. And then, and then like, so like you, the Modern Horizons two, as you can expect, the release was like a very tense time or very exciting time. And I would very regularly just get the same questions over and over and over again. And if I ever got a, when I would keep getting questions like the same question back to back. And if if I ever just like just got done answering something. And I got a question about something. I would just tell them that my answer to their question was Jade Avenger. Okay. Them getting these constructs up to 5-5 five, five this turn. It's kind of unlucky, to be honest. Um, I think I'm probably supposed to double block, take 7. They can Aether Spell Bomb a Construct if I do this, which I don't love. Aether Spell Bomb a Grief, rather. Yeah, I think with them being able to Aether Spell Bomb, the the grief I'll just do this so pushing the construct very likely means I'm not dead we will draw another push not so lucky I don't think I want to I think I caught it just back mold drifter again next turn it's obviously just so bad for me here that the um, shriek mod doesn't block it doesn't kill this. Yeah, the iteration was just such a good top deck. What can you do? DRC is really good. I guess I can streak ball that though. 
Hard catch Shriek Maul, then Chump Block here, but I died to the Aether Spell Bomb, so I have to draw Fatal Push again. Can't cast that. So we draw Fatal Push, I like push this, Shriek Maul here, we're doing okay. No luck? Okay, bummer. Okay, so against Breach, I'm going to be bringing in the Path of Perils. I, oh, Path of Peril misses, it misses uh, Emery, which is uh, annoying. I will bring in the Needles to stop the combo. Dress Down can be good against Saga. T Saga. Path of Peril hits everything besides Emery. Maybe do something like 2-2. Two, two. I think I cut the Shriek Maul. I think I trim a Thoughtseize. I think I cut the Spell Skype. Could, keep, could leave the Spell Skype in. Probably cut the fourth Relic. Maybe the Saga plan just... I, I Maybe I'll just be on Path of Peril. These these also answer Saga tokens, and then they kill Ragavan, kill DRC, kill Shredder. Can trim, like, the 4th Rebirth, too. Get any further than Soul Deck of Building Stream? Not really. I'm still, still hammering that one out a little bit. Still hammering that one out a little bit. Ego. I think Needle is better than Ego, because it's just, you know... Kind of like a one mana version of that effect. I like this hand a lot. Let's keep this. You can go turn one thoughts, he's turn two summoning, then Muldrifter, Malak Rebirth, Muldrifter. Put a cup seven. Channeler, Breach. I guess they just have to take the Channeler here. Was my avatar before Jade Avenger? I think it was Black Lotus for a long time. I think it was Black Lotus for like the longest time. Felix, eight months, thank you, thank you. And it's been Jade Avenger for a long, for, you know, a year now at least. They didn't play the Bobble last turn, which maybe means they drew Shredder for turn. No, maybe they have Emery. Maybe they've got nothing, huh? Nothing and nobody. Oh, oh, flooded again. Maybe we should go back down to 22 lands. You ever ate the spell bomb with Muldrifter? I'll evoke. I know I I know maybe I'm not like being able to draw into Undying Effect exactly next turn kind of stinks, but I can just cottage back the Muldrifter. Tried the white splash, blue area prowess, two where two, two path to exile, two ending. It's really good. I still just say it's better than Iconoclast. Or Sprite Dragon. I think for the most part, uh, Iconoclast is better in grindier metagames, and Sprite Dragon is better in more combo metagames. I don't want to play the second Heartless Summoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double Heartless Summoning doesn't do anything. Okay, so that can break up me undying this small drifter. Taking four down to nine. So I have to, so I'm, I'm, so take this down. I'm drawing mole drifter. I can evoke mole drifter and look to draw a path of peril. I have three of those or fatal push or grief as a blocker or acerac. I think that that's enough cards to just evoke. I could also, I guess, stack it to where. I can stack it to where the Evoke Resolves first and then Cottage it back. I'm also, they have to have another, I guess they're going to have another artifact. Alright, so maybe I just cast this one. Since the Ace Rack is like less of a good draw now. Okay. Evoke the Grief and then maybe get more information on what to Needle. I might Needle Lantern, I might Needle Bobble. They have a grape shot. Fuck. So if I take just breach and they draw a land for turn, which I kind of have to bank on, they grape shot here. I take eight, go to one. Dead to breach, dead to plus spell bomb. Yeah, I think I I I I have I have to take the breach. I have to take the breach.
So I should either name Urza Saga and leave like Path of Perils and out, although, yeah, that's fine. I can also name it Lantern. Let's name Urza Saga. They should have sacked the Lantern. No, they need their Saga tokens to be as big as possible. Yeah, so they need they, to kill me with Grape Shot. They either need they need to draw any one, two, or zero mana spell. So I need them to draw a land. They drew lightning bolts. Good beats, good beats, good beats. Could this be a Karn board deck? I don't usually like to play Karn in decks like this with um, fast mana without fast mana. I mean, you have Heartless Summoning, but it doesn't work with Karn. Okay, let's keep this. Let's put back the grief. Turn one wooded foothills. It's going alright, mana symbols. Going alright. You can play versions of the deck with Diabolic Intent. So the problem with trying to play Diabolic Intent is all of the creatures that are good to sack to intent, um, all of the creatures that are good to sack to intent have one toughness and you can't really play those cards very well with heartless summoning so what is foothills katria triome misty not not creativity very likely just rhinos uh, all of my opponents have been very nice and conceded so far it's been great didn't crack their fetch end of turn they might think I'm playing Scam. I think I'm starting to become pretty interested in cutting the 23 land again. I was getting kind of flooded last night, but... Okay, let's see what we draw. If I draw a combo piece, I'll probably play Relic this turn and try to win next turn. Drawing Thoughtseize, though, which is kind of an easy... Thoughtseize push-push turn. Oh, they have their own Blood Moon. Which doesn't matter that much, because I can just get a Swamp, and I have the Relic of Legends, too. I think I'll take the Borrower. Push, get a Basic Swamp, cast Push. And then I have to decide if I'm going to tutor Acerec, or if I'm going to tutor Heartless Summoning. Heartless Summoning is a bit better if I draw a Drifter, but Acerec is you know a card I can cast, and then basically... Cost one less with the Relic of Legends. Do you think Teemer or like four or five color Saga would be better than Jun Saga? I think that I like Jun Saga more than Teemer Saga. I know that Teemer Saga is the new hot hero deck of the week, but um, I like I like Jun Saga a bit more, and I I think that you really don't want to be more than three colors in your Saga deck because that card taps your colors. All right, so spin the footfalls, cast the blood moon. Yeah, I think I think I agree. I think casting Acer is good. We could also um, I think I think that drawing heartless summoning. No, I think heartless summoning were one short of winning. Their hand right now is just a dead gun. I guess they can bounce their agent. That's pretty slow. No way, I drew heartless summoning. But sad, sadly, sadly, I'm one mana short. Of just winning right now. I do. I do like that the six pretty recently into Blood Moon. Funny enough, Relic of Legends. <laughs> just play a Mana Rock five head. So what can they draw here? Brazen Borrower. I don't think does it. They just okay. They just do Stomping Ground. GG. Bouncing Ace does nothing. We're wanting to bounce it anyways. Can I explain the combo? Good time to explain the combo. So Heartless Summoning makes Ace cost just one mana. And then you can tap... Uh, or you can activate Relic's ability to tap Ace to make another mana. And you get to do this infinite times. And when you're doing this infinite times, you get to go through Lost Mine of Fandelver as many times as you like. Going through Lost Mines of Fandelver as many times as you like lets you go through the Dark Rooms pool as many times as you like, allowing you to uh, drain your opponent for one. It only takes like a, roughly a billion clicks, but um, that's okay. 
Hopefully my opponent will concede. We've had uh, not not all of our opponents have conceded so far because it's Christmas. And surely nobody would make me click through all of this on Christmas. Yeah, very similar to a Lurin combo. Although Lurin is not legacy legal. We've successfully dark pulled them twice. But my opponent at least now has finally had the courtesy to F6. The abandoner is legacy. No, it's just not legal in modern. I don't know if that wasn't clear. My finger is already starting to hurt. Oh, opponent. Okay, we, we do get to do the last four damage a bit faster. I asked Esther if she would be my clicking intern for today. Still waiting to hear back from her. Less two damage. Oh right, I, I keep I keep thinking that like you. Oh, I can, I I think I can make them. Okay, thank you, opponent. Thank you, opponent. Thank you, opponent. I don't care that you waited. I don't care that you waited. That's okay. Based and cool. Based and cool. It's Christmas. A Christmas miracle. <laughs> as cool as this deck is, we're probably not going to get too many streams out of it just because of how. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, how painful your opponents can make it for you. Could bring in Path of Peril. I don't know if I need it. I can like evoke Shriek Maul and die Shriek Maul maybe. It's probably worse than just Path of Peril. I mean this kills the other stuff though. I'll play one as like a profane two to target. Yeah, this is just how much I love y'all. We're doing it on I'm doing it, you know. We're winning a lot of game ones, which is a good sign for your combo deck. Suspends the footfalls. Second thought sees. Force of negation, shardless agent, fable the mirror breaker. It's kind of interesting. Okay, we'll take the agent. We can thought seize the um the force of negation if we need to get something through. Pretty likely to be go like turn two, suspend pro food tutor, turn three, relic, cast thought sees. I, I, like I, there's a good chance my opponent just won't have the blue card. Although now I suppose I it's maybe a bit better to like suspend profane tutor and thought seize. Let's see, there this has a couple more turns coming down. Do you have a backup deck prepared? I don't. This deck is too sick to ever even think about a backup deck. Alright, so if they have violent outburst, then maybe we're profane tutoring for um <laughs> Maybe we're profane tutoring for the sweeper. Their hand, thankfully, is not very good. Next turn, we can... Next turn, they'll presumably play Fable. We will tutor up Heartless Summoning, play Relic Heartless Summoning. We have another Profane Tutor for Acerac the following turn. Clint, six months, thank you. Oh, sorry, I already said that. <laughs> thank you again. They do get a couple of loots into some interaction, which is not maybe ideal, but not everything can be ideal, I guess. All right, I guess I'm gonna hold up Flusterstorm. I know my opponent doesn't have any interaction right now, so I don't need to play a land first. Not gonna flusterstorm these rhinos as they are way too slow to matter. But I'm mostly wanting to flusterstorm like petty theft or force of vigor. 
And his Fury, two mystery cards. I imagine the Fury's getting in the bin here. When is the Neoform deck going to be on YouTube? Uh, sometimes this week, I imagine. You know, we, we had a really, really good week last week, so there's a, a bit of a backlog. Alright, two unknowns in my opponent's hands. Please, Hardcast Fury. <laughs> Is Ooze Storm coming back at some point? We'll see, we'll see. Definitely if it gets a new card. Um, so this stops me from having Fluster Storm up to protect. Okay, we went there, out of hands, out of cards in hand. Cool, two and one, two and one. So I have to make sure not to misclick, which I kind of woke up thinking I'm probably going to misclick at least once today. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. And once you get to once you get to mine tunnels, it's harder to misclick because then you get a treasure token. Okay, I guess I got to pop my knuckles. Point of conceded last time. I got 20 minutes on the clock. Dark pool. It sure would be dark cool of you, opponent, if you could um, concede. Yes, yeah, so we can auto yield to dungeon triggers. I think that's the only one you can auto yield to, so let me do that. This is, am I just dead? Yes. Yes, you're just dead. I dark pool 15 more times. Thank you, opponent. Basin cool. All right, tune up. Tune one, tune one, tune one. <laughs> I, I actually think uh, Rockrick, Rockrick is a little underplayed with like how much game and Murktide there are. Like Rockrick is really good against both those decks. Jade Avenger 2, yeah. Let's say Mole to 6. What card? Uh, General Ferris Rock Rick. So, like, we, we've, we've played a few versions of the deck that, like, are really good against specific... It's, it's really good against Hammer Time, Murktide, uh, Rakdos, and, um, and the Cascade decks because it plays Chalice. But it is weaker to it was it was really weak to Yorion decks, but those decks are obviously gone, which is nice. Okay, I think we're up against um, Ephemerate Reanimator, the Witch's Cottage Reanimator deck, which is very cool to run up against. We have Amortigo, we have Orvar for this this matchup. Fluster Storm two, I guess. Moldrifter. Let's go. Ah, you just love to see it. I would love to draw land and go Relic of Legends into Thoughtseize here. That would be ideal. Had some mana issues this match. Okay, we'll just take Archon of Cruelty. Just kidding. Um, I guess we take the Persist. They, they can either be just touch back their Moldrifter and maybe get an Archon, which is not ideal. Will be a new tier deck with Yorian gone. I will basically never like declare to you that a deck that I work on is going to be a tier deck. Um, time will tell. Okay, wait, wait. Why didn't they get Cottage? I, I, I it's also like that. The, the deck is weak to Ren and Six, and that's not a great place to be. But I, I have been working on some other versions with Eladarmi's Call, just so you can a little bit more consistently get your Rockerick. The Battle of the Moldrifters. Moldrifter, modern staple. Moldrifter, modern staple. Oh, well. I kind of want to grief that uh, Aether Mage's touch. Okay, so they're just YOLOing it, and they missed. You, you really, you really got to... 
You got a cottage back the mole drifter. I think they I think they messed that up on accident. You got a cottage back the mole drifter before you ate your mage's touch there. Oh, they, oh they, they, they did they did have they fetched a swamp instead. Okay, so grief is gonna take my mole drifter probably. Which would have been awesome with my dying malice, but whatever. I'm not mad, you're mad. They're dead to be drawing Acerek though. No! Okay, give me my Mold Drifter back. Oh, I guess I could, if I draw Witch's Cottage, I could Cottage back my Mold Drifter too, so any fetch land. Or Cottage is actually a pretty good draw here. We have a few turns. Okay, there we go. And we can also now, with the... Okay, we can Fatal Push the, the Grief. And I should have done it. I should have done it um, already. So my opponent can't ephemerate. But I guess if they're ephemerating Grief instead of Muldrifter, we are A-OK. -okay. I, I, I do not care how this zombie is pronounced. I'm sorry. I don't... I, I don't... I don't have a strong opinion on pronouncing this uh, this card. I guess I can also push the grief again. Yeah, if it would actually be good for me here. I do not care how to pronounce this zombie. I have I don't have a big interest in pronouncing it correctly. Listen, if wizards are not gonna say if they're not gonna say any of these card names out loud before they print them, I'm not gonna learn how to pronounce them myself. <laughs> Because <laughs> there is no chance they ever said that card's name out loud before it hit the shelf. Okay, they are one man away from Hardcast Archon. Okay, I guess I'm pushing this grief. There's an Archon mystery card. I'm drawing Mole Drifter. Get to dig pretty deep for an Acerac. No, I don't know Aswell's full name. I also can't pronounce that one. Also, I love you guys. I don't love you enough to learn how to pronounce these cards. Ooh. I guess my opponent just straight up can't win if I if if I, if I just pitch grief here. Although they could probably win it either way. Mole Drifter is so good. Modern staple mole drifter. GG. Oh, I did forget to tap. That's okay, I've got more mana. Yeah, I just I mean just cast it's fine too. We've we've won. We've we found a winning line. Yeah, but maybe casting it after evoking is fine also. Shout out to Dark Pool. They're really visiting that Dark Pool a lot today. Bob the Ninja, think of the nine months. Dark Pool, baby. We're there. We're in the Dark Pool right now. Vibin' in the Dark Pool. I'll meet you down in the dark pool. <laughs> I have to, you have to auto yield to the dungeon each time you could go back in. Oh boy. I'll just be chilling in that dark pool, baby. <laughs> Anybody have any uh, fun anecdotes or topics we can chat about while we th rethink our deck choice for today? Rethink our decision to drop out of college to be a content creator?
actually cheat out their teammates. The good news is, I feel like opponents will, will vary. Okay, I my, my opponents are also taking so long to F6 for... I, I, think, I think it's mostly just because they're like... Trying to figure out how it works for a little bit. No opponent has made us click all the way through. A lot of opponents have made us click many times. Last talking, more clicking. Yes, sir. Dark pool. This click is way... This this deck has got to be more clicks than any deck. Easily way more than 8 key. Listen, I'm in, I'm in that dark pool right now. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling real good. I'm feeling great. All right. <laughs> Dark pool is my happy place. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, uh, I will say, my, my pony, you're playing. You're playing one of my brews. You're playing one of my brews. Like, please. <laughs> That should that should buy me a concession, right? You, you're, if you're playing one of my brews, and you see me clicking through a combo, just say, you know what? I'm gonna thank Aspiring Spike for this deck list. I'm gonna, I'm gonna concede. Yeah, I'll type please. It's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> please, it's Christmas, sir. Could you please spare a concession? <laughs> please. I'll never ask for anything again. <laughs> I ran the dark pool, though. We're in that dark pool. If only Tendrils of Agony would be legal, then we could put a dead card in our deck that would require like 150 clicks instead of 300 clicks. Can you imagine playing Solitude in this deck and like your opponent's like always at like 25, 26 life? I'm in that dark pool. <laughs> the problem is I gotta stay in that dark pool. I guess I could just like I don't have to tap the relic for a few times because I have all these treasure tokens. How many clicks for one dream cycle? Maybe it's better to not think about it. I'm in that dark pool. Maybe it's just best to not worry about it. Switch dungeon? Um, not yet. I'm chilling. I also I blame Reed Duke for this for the whole you know make your opponent kill you attitude. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding, Reed. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. But maybe sometimes it's Christmas and oh okay. I also like my opponent's like dead. They're definitely gonna concede before I, I get all the way through. They're gonna concede at like life or something. Just kidding, Reed, I'm just gonna mean it. Reed actually had a really good uh, video idea structure for Channel Fireball videos the other day. It's it really good. Dark pool, baby, we're in the dark pool. We're in the dark pool. Opponents under no obligation to concede. Yeah, you, just like your parents are under no obligation to give you Christmas presents on Christmas, but it sure would be nice if they did. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're under no obligation to give a stranger directions to the gas station, but it sure would be nice if you did. <laughs> I 
I'm in the dark pool. I agree, you're not under an obligation, but it's Christmas also. All right, I forgot they had that in their hand. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't yield to the ETB because you have to tap it. We're we're still at sixty minutes of the clock. We're chilling. We're chilling. Chilling in the dark pool. Chilling in that dark pool, baby. Any news on CB Pro in Europe? Uh, yeah, I've I've actually been like sitting in on the board meetings, and I've been like, you know what? I just really feel like we should make it America only. And everybody else is like, no, please, Spike, no, we need the vote to be unanimous. And I'm like, I don't know, guys. Let me let me get back to you next week. I'll I'll think about it. I because I I have like the the, the kill switch for the European. Uh, Channel Fireball Pro Access in my office, and uh, I just I've I've got that button pressed for now because it gives me a feeling of power. Just kidding, I have no idea. Okay. We're about to be in that dark pool, I think, for the last time. As this one, okay. So no, this one. Each player loses two life unless they discard a card. Okay, they can discard a card. Each player loses two life unless they sacrifice an artifact creature or land. Okay, they can do that. Oh, but I can go. I can go in trapped entry. Okay, so I can go. I, I have to do. I have to go to the dark pool one more time. We're gonna. We're gonna one more time go into that dark pool. Wait, are we in the Lost Mines? What is happening? Where am I? What is life? Why did I play this deck today? We're in the Dark Pool. That's where I am. In the Dark Pool. Okay, we draw a card. And then, okay, then I click View Dungeon Information. This is Trapped Entry. Each player loses one life. There are one life. I, cl I click Acer Rack one more time. And then storm count is 68. Oh no, I could have made it 69. Ah, what happened? Tomb of Annihilation, baby. Tomb of Annihilation is what's happening. Let's go. <laughs> I, I should. I really should have. I really should have cast one more spell. Grape shot. Okay, do one grape. The problem. I really hate the idea of playing a grape shot and playing a card that is just dead and just like saves you like a hundred clicks. I just. I just can't bring myself to do it. I don't know. Pushes out, shriek more out. Yeah, playing dead cards with save flex. You just can't do it, I think. Okay, um my finger hurts. Let's go to game two. Hopefully I just win this game with like Orvar. No, like Masterminds like you're not gonna play Masterminds Acquisition. That card is horrible. It's so bad. You just, you just, should, you just gotta take your, you just gotta like get a click and turn, okay? I asked Esther if she'd be my click and turn today. She said sure without really knowing what she'd agree to. Um, I'll see if she, uh, next time, next time we combo, I'll see if she's available. <laughs> Although I don't think she could probably click through in time without you know Magic Online APM experience. Okay, this sounds pretty good. My opponent's deck is all swamps anyway, so playing our board doesn't matter that much. Eight minutes to click through. Yeah, roughly. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. So close. <laughs> so close. Does she know how to play Magic? Yeah, she knows the rules. We played a few times. We just got through, we're playing the Mass Effect Remastered Edition together for the first time. I, I've played it before, she's playing Mass Effect for the first time. And uh, we just got through Mass Effect 1, we're gonna go to the next one soon. 
playing one of Emrakul isn't the worst. It is literally the worst. Any of these cards are just so dead, they're so bad if you draw them, and I really don't I don't, I don't like to play cards like that usually. I guess I'm evoking. I really wish I had drawn a freaking black card. It was really greedy of them to not take the grief, but man, look at them, they just have it. Okay, pretty good draw. Basically zero mana. Okay, that's all. That's our combo. <laughs> Although Profane Tutor is going to take a little bit of time. You can also Profane Tutor for Orvar, but that, that'll probably be a little slow too. All right. <laughs> Cottage back Archon of Cruelty likely means that they're going to Aether Mage's Touch. Although what's kind of nice about them going for Aether Mage's Touch here is that the Archon bounces back to the hand. The Archon is going to deal me 12, but uh, I can take 12. So here we go. Relic of Legends, Witch's Cottage back, Mole Drifter, Suspend Profane Tutor. Uh, take 12 from this Archon. Who cares? And then be able to win for sure in two turns, and then win next turn if we can find an, a uh, Dungeon Boy off of our Mole Drifter. Yeah, Muldrifter is a mono staple. I guess we get one extra draw if we play... Oh, no, we're going to lose both Marsh Flats. They can draw Ephemerate to Ephemerate to Archon, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. That's my timeout. I, 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 should, I should be fine on the timeout. I don't think it'll be an issue. Although, I guess my opponent, my opponent will be at higher life total this time. Yes, they shocked! <laughs> Why did they shock? Teferi. So Teferi stops Profane Tutor. Dang. So I guess I just I mean this this bounces back to their hands, so we're not we're not just dead or anything, but my profane tutor is not gonna really do anything at this point. But, uh, Acerac off of a Mole Drifter is a big W. Too bad if we draw an Undying Effect, you can't scam the Mole Drifter, though. Okay, we'll just go Witch's Cottage back Mole Drifter, and then a Mord Ego Archon. You have to make sure to play fast. They cited out an Archon? I literally never do that. This makes sense. I guess uh, I'm already go. Where's Dog? Um, with Esther, I think. Lucy can open the door if she wants to and come hang out. <laughs> she does sometimes. Yeah, we're oh, my opponent only has three minutes ahead of me on this clock. <laughs> what could benefit so much from macro featuring client? It would be awesome if any nerds in chat want to go get a job at Wizards for like a day just so they can you know get that done. That would be great. Okay, they didn't cottage. They they hit a mole drifter. They keep casting these without cottaging first. It's kind of weird. I think I'm just casting this now. Ace wreck. Let's go. Put need solitude white card. Persist Mold Drifter looking for Solitude White Carb. Are we headed to that dark pool chat? Are we about to head to that dark pool? I think we're, 
Oh no, I'm not, I forgot to tap the relic. I forgot to do it twice. <laughs> I mean, I guess my opponent shouldn't be conceding, huh? <laughs> yeah, what can I do though? It's just, my finger hurts. <laughs> my brain is broken. Honestly, the pro gamer move for my opponent would be to um, wait until like I'm about to kill them, and then solitude, and then uh, I'm just left with nothing. Although I could like, I could find another Acerac, get scries, get cards. How long did it take last time? I think it took eight minutes last time. But uh, I'm my finger uh, is degrading like a weapon in Dark Souls. So oh, this is actually terrible for my Dark Souls no hit practice tonight. I had to order a new controller because I broke the B button for the for the Dark Souls. By the way, I'm in the dark pool. Please, opponent. You. The thing here is like, my opponent knows I can click. They know I can click this fast. They know I can do it. They. I did it last game. Why not concede? You know. You know. I. I'm capable of killing this quickly. So okay, I'm just going to my happy place, and my happy place is that dark pool. I'll meet y'all in the dark pool. I know that casting this spell sky would be fun, I just don't have the clicks in it. Clicks in me. <laughs> yeah, I need to say it, please. It's Hanukkah? Question mark. Kwanzaa. It's Dark Pool Festival. It actually may be closer than I thought. Hold on, I have to actually have to click really fast. It should be fine. But I really can't dick around too much. Oh, and the clicks, oh, the, yeah, I forgot that the more cards you draw, the, the more annoying the clicks get. Well, I can get, um, I can get two cards out of my hands with just playing a land, evoking a grief, and this will, this will keep the Acerac from jumping around. Yeah, I can get the spell sky out of my hand for two, yeah, that's true. I, I, I do think it's I think I think keeping the hand uh, as empty as possible does save time because uh, because the Acerac starts bouncing around. And eventually I will I guess we can maybe do this a little bit. Just use the treasures to go a bit faster. I don't wanna, I'll go, I'll wait until I have like three black floating or something to start tapping again so I don't miss quick. In the dark pool. Just have to go to the dark pool seven more times.
Please no bullying. Please no bullying opponent. It's okay. It's okay. They are under no obligation to concede. Just like, again, your mom is not under any obligation to give you Christmas presents. It's all right. Can you imagine waking up Christmas morning? Your mom goes, um, actually, I'm not under any obligation to get you anything. It's obviously different if you know you go through some financial troubles, but if your opponent's a, if your mom's a magic online player, fate worse than uh, than anything really. <laughs> sacrifice or take two well the thing the thing it won't be faster because my opponent will just sacrifice instead of taking two so you you get to save one click by going through the the dungeon one time the the tomb of annihilation one time so evoke this to get the hand more empty i'm not sure that this actually saves clicks Just close your eyes, go to that dark pool. Yeah, man, yeah, Fluster, Fluster Storm would break Magic Online at this point. If you, yeah, so if you go to Tomb, it doesn't bounce, so you can't, you can't just go through Tomb every single time, which would be faster, but if you go through a Tomb, the Acer X stops bouncing. Um, but, but it, it can be, it can be your very last, um, your very last trigger. Also, if you don't have enough time, you can just go through the, the, the left dungeon a couple times. You can go through the left dungeon a couple times and then, like, just cast some spells for zero. But we're going to, like, be very... We're very easily going to have enough time to combo at this point where... Uh, yeah, we're going to actually get to 69 Storm this time. Sadly, we won't finish exactly on it like we could have last time. I think... Wait, is it exactly... Hold on. So we draw a card. We draw. It might be exactly because we draw a card. Then we we get through the, this dungeon one more time, and then we go to Tomb of Annihilation one time. Dude, it's all, it's actually so lucky that my opponent shocked. My opponent shocked um this turn. <laughs> Yeah, you can thought these yourself. I think I'm just going to go through it this time. 60, 67. Draw a card. Then, like, I have to thought seize. But then I get to go 69. It's so funny that it's, like, always uh, Tomb of Annihilation. There we go. We redeemed ourselves. We redeemed ourselves. <laughs> All right, let's go. Perfect. Storm count 69. Okay, on the play, match four, let's go. Oh, wasting valuable click time. Um, Keep this. Play one meat hook as a board wipe. Mm. I don't know, I, 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 I am against playing any of these dead cards. Most of your opponents will concede. When they don't concede, you get to hang out with your Twitch chat and do a lot of clicking. It's okay. My experience writing polite things like high GLHF increase the odds of concession. I feel like high GLHF, I almost feel like it's more likely to be the opposite. <laughs> more likely. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Lynn, seven months ago, thank you. It's not that big a deal. Okay, shock and stomping ground to ice me. To, that is not nice. To ice. 
Okay, so we'll Acerac, Scry 1. I, was, I would kind of... I, we could keep this to, like, Undy or Muldrifter next turn, because this can give us a treasure. Um, but I think I just want to be able to venture into the dungeon a bit more. Scrying, looking for our combo. Oh, I, I just want to be able to draw our... Oh, well, perfect, perfect, perfect. Play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. <laughs> H-I-G-L-F play Black Leaf Cliffs on Die Fury. Okay, that's fine too. Kinda. Doesn't mean the Force of Negation is now in play. Thought that they may have been creativity. They didn't force my Heartless Summoning though. That resolved us so fast. And we even are already halfway through our... Um, <laughs> Lost Mine of Fandelver. Oh, dang, I didn't click. Again, I messed up the clicks. Oh, my gosh. I just, it's just so hard. You just click it so many times and, like, life just stops, life just starts losing all of its meaning. I, I really, I can't, I can't mess this up until I get another mine token, though. Or draw land. Esther, you want to come click? Oh, never mind. They conceded. I think actually, I'm ready to go on the draw. is too slow. You want to do one Shriek Ball, one Path of Peril, maybe two Path of Perils. Thank you, opponent. Based in cool. It's Christmas Miracle. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Path of Perils lately because it's like pretty good against Hammer. Kill Sanctifier is really nice. I'm gonna be playing them in the Rakdos Scam Sacrifice deck too. Yeah, our opponent last round didn't concede and my hand hurts. Can they win if they... They, they can What's win. They've they, they played enough creatures. They can, they can win a game if you take footfalls, but... I think you can bring it in against them. You can play it on the play against them also. Okay, we'll keep this. We can scam. Yeah, this is a weird deck, huh? But it's on a mold of six. Death by a thousand dungeons. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I'm going to just pitch the Path of Peril. I think. Yeah, I, I want to be able to suspend Profane Tutor next turn. I can need Profane Tutor for a Path of Peril, if I guess, if I need it. Brutal Mold of Five, get scammed. Got a latest build for Ecto Scam. Uh, I'm kind of like struggling a little bit with the mana base and then the exact sideboard, but um, I've, I've been working on it. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but makes me feel better about my pitch decision. And feeling better about your decision is better than drawing perfectly. Also, every time I'm hitting my opponent with grief, I'm just thinking this is like minus twenty clicks. <laughs> this is like this is so much time saved every time you hit them with a grief. Uh oh. Okay, we do have a Path of Peril. Don't have a land. Yeah, like one yeah, one grief attack is like 60 clicks. <laughs> okay, cool. Next year we can get a uh Heartless Summoning, go Heartless Summoning, Drifter, maybe Drifter Drifter. And I I okay, I'm not I'm really not supposed to attack. I'm supposed to just be the control deck at this point, but I can, and my opponent's also conceding. I mean, I could, I could win with beatdowns, but I, I could win with beatdowns. I'm not sure. Touch the Spirit Realm and Wall of Omens and One Planes of the Board to help you get over Blood Moon and pivot from Graveyard to Blink Deck. Uh, how do you fit all of those cards into the deck? And One Planes doesn't let you cast Solitude. It doesn't let you cast Aether Mage's Touch. It doesn't... It, 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 that, Touch the Spirit Realm doesn't exile enchantments, does it? 
It's just creatures and artifacts. Creatures, planeswalkers. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave the Spectre block now. Ah, I'll just add more cards. It's also like if you have one planes in the sideboard, you have you have four, four marsh flats. I guess it's still not super easy to get. So if I shock this in, they violent outburst. I'm dead to a removal spell all of a sudden. I guess I'm just gonna play this tapped. Okay, no violent outburst. Just good, 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 good. I know, I, I, and, and like, I, I, I don't usually like, like these kind of suggestions either, because like, Planes is so bad in your Cottage mana base, and Wall of Womens and Touch of Spell Room are a little suboptimal, and then you make yourself a little bit better against Blood Moon, and you're still really weak to Blood Moon. Like, that card is still really good against you, even with these changes, so. Usually these are the kind of changes I don't like so much. Okay, Flusterstorm is kind of the best draw. Yeah, I, I agree that this deck is likely uh, better in paper, although we've been, again, getting a lot of Christmas miracles today and a lot of nice opponents conceding. Only had one opponent so far and make us click through the deck. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember to tap the Relic this time. Well, maybe my opponent will concede. Can't really have anything. They have to force a bigger green card. If, if every opponent maybe click through, would I have stopped through three games? I don't know. I mean, I think for the most part, people on Magic Online just they just want to play. They're not here to just like watch your opponent. Like, like the, the thing about like making your opponent do it is your opponent's gonna do it, and they're going to win the game, and you just waste you know forty minutes, uh, you, know, you know, twenty minutes for you, twenty minutes for your opponent for nothing, and then twenty minutes times you know fifteen hundred of y'all. <laughs> uh, so I think most most magic players understand that it is in their best interest to you know, but go away dungeons. I want wanna, wanna open my chests. Oh I saw an Aladdin's ring. Steam vents, soul spike.